This mini lecture covers uh, the filter part of the spectrophotometer slide you see right here. Uh, essentially the filters in this system, let me turn my pen on, are shown right here and right here. You'll notice in the, the particular spectrophotometer system that's shown here, we have two filters. Uh, the reddish filter that comes first, closest to the source, blocks some colors of light generated by the source so we can excite the sample. Um, and so those colors won't interfere with our measurement. The second filter, uh, this one right over here, closer to the detector, uh, blocks out all the colors of light that we don't want to see that are going to interfere with our measurement. And this lecture is going to talk about filters in a very basic sense and give you some context for it. Um, the types of filters we're talking about here are transmission filters, ones that pass the wavelengths you want and block the wavelengths you don't. Um, we use our transfer function description of light for this that we've talked about in class before. So the output intensity is just the transmission function of the filter, transmission function of the filter we call H or T of lambda multiplied by the input intensity. And notice that for this class and almost all the things you're going to encounter in your professional life, that the response of optical systems is linear. So all the rules of linear systems apply. In other words, you know, H1 times H2 is equal to H2 times H1. The total response or the total transfer function of a system is simply the product of all the blocks that make up the system. Um, one major difference between filters in electronics and your other classes and those in optics is that we're talking about intensity here. And there is no phase of intensity because it's a power measurement. So we're not going to need to worry about phase. Now, strictly, the linear assumption and the fact that we can ignore phase aren't completely true, but this is going to be covered in graduate level courses. And if you're interested at some point in your life, you can take a course on nonlinear optics, which is a very fascinating field with some uh, really interesting applications. I want to talk about three types of filters. Neutral density filters that change the brightness or intensity of the light, but don't block wavelengths and let other wavelengths pass. Color glass filters. Um, which block some wavelengths and let others pass. And interference filters, which are like color glass filters, but they're very, very narrow band pass or band blocking filters designed for very specific wavelength ranges. Uh, I'm going to use this gray rectangle here for a neutral density filter. And if you look at the optical density or how much it blocks as a function of wavelength, you see these neutral density filters are pretty flat, that, that all the wavelengths get through pretty much with equal proportion, except for maybe those there. There's a little bit of change of transmission. Um, the optical density essentially is the transmission of the filter and 10 to the minus OD, where OD is the optical density, uh, gives how much light is transmitted. So an optical density of 1 lets 10% of the light through, an optical density of 2 lets 1% uh, of the light through, and so on and so forth. Colored glass filters, which I'm going to represent by these stripedy rectangles, um, do have essentially a fairly strong dependence on wavelength. Um, and you'll notice the transmission of the filter, the y-axis is almost always transmission, is given on a logarithmic scale, so the full width half maximum of this filter is on the order of, say, 300, uh, 250 nanometers, something like that. Um, it's in has high transmission to blue and green wavelengths and blocks a lot of the reds. The light that gets through this is going to be a bluish green color. Um, interference filters, on the other hand, are light colored glass filters. They're made through a very, very different process. And they have a very, very narrow transmission band compared to other types of filters. You'll notice the full width half maximum on this filter um, is only, to me, looks like about 10 nanometers. You'll also notice the transmission of the filter is on the order of 65%. Uh, that means if light of 515 nanometers comes along, 65% of that light will get through. Of course, if light of 500 nanometers comes along, practically none of the light will get through because the transmission there is pretty much close to zero. Let's go ahead and erase all these lines. And let me stress again about the linear nature of these filters. Um, that if I have six filters, three neutral density filters, two color glass filters, and an interference filter, in a particular order and I shuffle them up, the transmission function or the transfer function of this is going to be exactly the same, no matter what order the filters come in, because they are linear elements. Okay, one of the common things we want to do with filters is calculate how much power from a source gets through the filter. 
And if you haven't listened to the mini lecture or aren't comfortable with calculating how much power comes out of a source at a particular wavelength or a particular range of wavelengths, you should stop at this point and go and listen to that 10 minute lecture because I'm going to use a lot of the results of that in order to explain what I'm talking about now. And I'm going to assume you've listened to that. So stop and or pause this video and go look at that. Um, we know the power in the given spectral range from the discussion we had earlier on the source is simply an integral of the power as a function of wavelength uh, over the wavelength range. And all we have to do to calculate the, the amount of power that gets through a filter is throw the transmission function as a function of wavelength into that equation. And that's shown in the diagram here. Here we have the filter. And let's say this is our interference filter. We looked at it in this previous slide. So basically, we have a width of, of 10 nanometers, a full width half maximum of 10 nanometers. And we're going to say our transmission is 65% from looking at that curve. Essentially, we simply multiply our power calculation by 0.65 and use the bandwidth of delta lambda of, of 10 nanometers. And for a narrow band interference filter, you can do an approximation to get, or the approximation to get power over a narrow spectral range we talked about earlier. However, if you have a filter with a broad response and the source intensity changes over the the filter response wavelength range, then you've actually got to do the integral. So let's do a real quick calculation to see how this would apply. Um, so here we have our filter, and we know that our transmission is 65%, or 0.65, and we know delta lambda from that interference filter we looked at is on the order of 10 nanometers. Okay? Uh, just like we did with the source, I don't like these Gaussian looking curves, so I'm going to approximate them by uh, a rectangle and a triangle, and this is what we've done before. So there we go, we call our source a triangle, and let's call our filter a rectangle, and that'll give us a decent ballpark approximation of the transmission. If I want anything more accurate, again, I've got to go and numerically do that integral in MATLAB or some other kind of calculation program. Okay. Well, this is pretty straightforward. We know from our discussion on power, basically, the line shape at the peak, G peak, is equal to 1 over the full width half maximum of the source right here. Um, and I'm going to change colors and get my pen to be a little bit smaller because I'm going to run out of room if I have to do this giant pen. And also, black ink is going to be a little bit easier to see and easier on the eye. And basically, um, if I calculate this peak as I did in the uh, uh, power talk, um, I know that I can calculate G at the wavelength of interest, which is around 515 nanometers for this filter, um, because this just looks to be about 70% of the peak. So the value of the line shape, the wavelength we're interested in essentially is 70% of the peak value, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, we also know that the power transmission through the filter, so let's write P through filter, so we know what we're talking about, is equal to the total power from our source, which we're going to be given in the problem, at the wavelength, at the multiplied by the line shape at the wavelength of interest, lambda naught, and essentially we've already calculated that above. We know we need the width of the filter and or the width delta lambda over the, the power the spectral range we're calculating and in this case that's just determined by the filter delta lambda which we know is 10 nanometers and the only thing we have to do and this is exactly the calculation we did in the the previous mini lecture is multiply this by the filter response t naught and so basically if we put these numbers in right we get p total we get 0.7 over the full width half maximum of the source which we're given. We know delta lambda is 10 nanometers because that's the filter we have and within the transmission of the filter is 65 percent and we've got the power through the filter. Um, and this type of calculation is fairly straightforward to do and you'll see this in class. Let me end this talk by saying that filters are used in a huge variety of applications. One of the most famous or more important, economically important and lucrative applications of filters is designing filters for the internet. Because the reason you can send so much data through an optical fiber is you have hundreds of channels, each at a different wavelength, and you need very, very good interference filters 
to separate one channel from another. So the entire internet runs on this filter technology. And so what we're learning about filters doesn't just apply to detecting uh, particular colors of light in the spectrophotometer, but it has wide application and many important economic applications across technology.